Did you know that Yasuo was released more than a year ago? During the development, his appearance has changed drastically. When some of the sketches arrived, one of the female developers highly disagreed. The reason was that they needed something for the female audience to look at. She wanted Yasuo to be totally shirtless, and as the rest of the developers wanted him to be armored samurai, they made him something in between. Some of his famous quotes are related to Japanese. These two could be translated into Cutting Edge and Morning Dragon, but this is all in the year 2013. Let's go through the patch history and let's focus on trivia of skins and champions released in the 2014. Starting with the patch 4.1 in mid-January. This patch brought us the Lunar skins. These include the Lunar Goddess Diana, Dragonblade Riven and Warring Kingdom Strindamir. The Lunar Goddess Diana is a reference to Chang'a, a Chinese goddess of the moon. She is followed by a rabbit companion. If you look at Diana's splash art, you can notice a cloud being shaped as a rabbit. Trindamir is the reference to Guan Yu. This is referenced by his dragon-shaped blade. But this could be also referenced by the name Warring Kingdoms. Guan Yu was a war general around the year 200. This period of time is called the Three Kingdoms, which could also be referencing the Warring Kingdoms. Riven, on the other hand, was probably used just to fit the blade-themed lunar skins. I wasn't able to find any relation to the Chinese mythology. Apart from the lunar skins, this patch also brought the lunar icons. Some may even remember this patch as the day Blue Ezreal was effectively destroyed, adding the Butcher passive to the jungling items and removing its health and mana regen. Moving on to the early February and the patch 4.2, releasing the Scorched Renekton and Heartseeker Ash. Scorched Renekton was leaked more than a year before his eventual release. During that time, his textures were remade several times. Heartseeker Ash, same as the Heartseeker Vein, was released as the reference to the Valentine's Day. In the splash art, you can notice that Trindamir is holding his right side. This means that he's either just holding his wound, or he has the heart on the wrong side. During this patch, both Zerath and Skarner got their kit reworked. This eventually worked for Zerath as his popularity raised, but sadly for Skarner, he is just waiting for another rework. By the end of February, the patch 4.3 hit the game. This patch released one of my favorite champions of all time, Velkos, the first champion of 2014. Velkos is one of few intelligent creatures of the Void. He is a creature that is gathering knowledge from other species, practically making him a floating brain with an eye. In order to gather knowledge, he must first disintegrate his target. In the trailer for Velkos, you can see him hunting for people. He is actually looking for Zillion, as he holds the ultimate knowledge because he has seen the past and the future. This is also referenced by his quotes using the battle casket. Zillion, there is a great secret within you. He has also special quotes for Kassadin. A human who survived the void. Implausible. Yordles. Your recognition complete. And Poros. Our heart. Their intelligence drops in the presence of Poros. Battlecast Velkos being created by Victor as all the other Battlecast skins. He holds the title of the Infiltrator of the Battlecast army. Riot used famous YouTubers to hint Velkos in their videos. This is also a reference for Velkos looking for a valuable target. Bad come around the side, oh, you dead! What the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that was. Despite all the references on the Holding Abyss, Velkos is not an actual watcher. His abilities also have a few references. With each level, Velkos gains the attack damage of 3.141592, that is the value of Pi. This is a reference to his Q requiring geometry skills. Apart from releasing Velkos, this patch also gave us the team builder. It also gave us the reworked fear. The target affected by fear would no longer just run around randomly. Instead, it would slow the target and make it flee from the point it was feared. Moving on to the march for the patch 4.4, Kassadin and Heimedinger both got their rework. Kassadin would lose his silence and gain shield and interrupt, and Heimedinger would get a useful ultimate. This patch also released the Arctic Ops Varus. 
His visuals are very similar to the Battlefield Soldier. Apart from all of these, this patch was focused on balance issues. Followed up in early April by the patch 4.5. This patch featured the very first legendary skin of the year. The legendary Super Galaxy Rumble got released together with Void Fizz. Both of these skins were actually based on community sketches. The artist responsible for the fan art of Super Galaxy Rumble got actually invited to Riot to see the early development of the skin. This patch also released the Riot Ward skin. This also released the rework of Gragas and Rengar and the minor changes for Misfortune. And the cherry on top of this patch is the Boots Enhancement and the Feral Flare. Coming up in mid-April, the patch 4.6. A small patch that was focused on all kinds of bug fixes, but it also released the SKT skins. This included the SKT Ward. This also released the Atlantean Syndra, a skin that seems to be actually random. Twitch also got his visual upgrade. Coming up to the patch 4.7, this featured the second champion of this year, Braum, together with Dragon Slayer Pantheon and questionable Night Hunter Rengar. Braum was the very first champion to include special animations for attacking turrets. It seems that Braum was in development for a very long time, as there were hints way before his reveal. One of those hints featuring Braum in Defensive Mastery, he is on the icon of Jaggeron. Also, his moustached Poro friend can be seen on the Winter Wonder Lulu splash art. In game, Braum is interacting with a total of 11 different champions. Let's just quickly go through the list. Alistair, Annie, Ash, Caitlyn, Raven, Gragas, Fizz, Nami, Raven, Rindamir, and Vi. Both Dragon Slayer Pantheon and Braum are addition to the Dragon Slayer team. Together with Dragon Slayer Vayne and Jarvan, they are missing mid laner to complete the 5 man team. At the time, Pantheon was a very popular jungler. Not only did this patch give him a skin, it also nerfed him. They nerfed him so much that people could get refound if they bought the skin. Later on in May came the patch 4.8. This fun little patch brought us two skins. The Blade Queen Lissandra, which could be a reference to the Queen of Blades Kerrigan. When you use ult with this skin, you will create an Iron Maiden. This was a torture device in the medieval times. The second skin of this patch is the River Spirit Nami. This skin is a reference to Brazilian mythology. Ayara is immortal female being, something like Siren in Greek mythology. She uses her voice to lure men into water. In Brazilian version of the game, she gets special quotes bound with this mythology. Apart from those two skins, the patch 4.8 brought us one for all. It's a special game mode where all players play the same champion. Patch 4.9 of the early June. This is one of the most memorable patches of the year. This is the patch of the Pentakill Band. Karthus got his brand new visual upgrade. It brought him up to a very high quality, except for a one mistake. His face is no longer black. He also got a new voiceover, and this means more than dozens of interacting quotes. He has special quotes for 9 different champions, and special quotes for buying items like Archangel Stuff and Rabadon's Cap. Both Pentakill Sona and Pentakill Mord got texture upgrade. The entire Pentakill band as whole, they got a single splash art for all of them. But this patch wouldn't really be that special if that was all. The icing on the cake is that Riot released entire album for the Pentakill band. This album featured iconic songs like The Lightbringer and Omewrecker. All of these songs are called after in-game items. In mid-June came the patch 4.10. This patch was focused on FIFA 2014. That's why it brought us the Golden Goal Ward and the entire football team, including Primetime Draven. Alistair, Gragas, Lucian, Twisted Fate and Maokai, all of them share the same splash art. In the early development, the goalkeeper Maokai was supposed to wear blue jersey as the rest of the team. But because he's a goalie, he is supposed to wear a different jersey, that's why they changed him to black and white. The primetime Draven could be seen before on the shared SKT splash art. This is the very first champion to ever break the fourth wall in game. That means that he knows that he is just a champion in a video game. 
he is also a reference to LCS with his quote Shocks better interview me after this. During the recording for Primetime Draven's voice, the word Draven was recorded in total of 53 times. In the early July, the patch 4.11 didn't really bring much, apart from the changes for the gold earned with early kills and the two new skins. The Hazmat Heimerdinger, which could very well be inspired by the Breaking Bad, and Soul Stealer Vladimir, which is crossover skin with the Shadow Isles. Apart from these, this patch didn't really bring much. And that is because only two weeks later, another memorable patch came. The patch 4.12 brought us two skins, the Mecha Aatrox and Mecha Malphite. These two were created as rivals. The Mecha Aatrox was created by Rumble and Mecha Malphite by Heimerdinger and Zix. The reason why this patch was so great was because of the Doombots. This special mode got you against AI that had incredibly unfair advantage. I am talking about Lux shooting 6 lasers, Zix having homing bombs, and Fiddlesticks spawning Garen in every bush you don't have vision in. And if this wasn't difficult enough, you could even progress and get it harder. Apart from this, there is also one change that not many people know about, because Leak got the brand new audio engine. This engine finally was able to support surround sound. Followed by the patch 4.13, this patch brought us two skins, Debonar Vi and Ezreal. The splash arts of those skins captured a single moment. Both of them are playing the same hazard game at the same table, but Ezreal is winning and Vi just lost. This game is being played in Piltover, as you can see Chase and Caitlyn in the background. The next patch arrived in August, featuring another new champion. This time it's Nar. Nar is the very first champion that has ultimate that you can't control. In the sneak peek for Nar, there is a watcher defeating Nar in battle. After his defeat, Anivia throws him in solid ice. She was planning to awake him to fight the watchers, but using the Mega Nar form, Nar actually escaped the ice. After some wandering in the woods, Rengar saw him as a prime being, and so he wanted to hunt him for a trophy. That's why his entire lore is written from the view of Rengar. Dino Nar could be a reference to Dino Rang, as Rang is spelled backwards Nar. On the Dino Nar's art, there are two figurines. These are Garen and Katarina. If you recall as Dino Nar, the little blocks will spell LOL as League of Legends. Because Nar is using baby talk as his native language, there are no interacting quotes. Apart from Nar, this patch also included two skins, Arcane Misfortune and Riot Kale. Arcade Misfortune references old arcane games, with her auto-attacks, abilities and even death. Her recall is referenced to legendary Duck Hunt game. This is another skin inspired by a fan. This idea came in shortly after Arcane Sona. The original idea came in with Mario Head and the original NES guns. Both of these are referenced in the final version of the skin. Riot Gale is another Riot based skin. She uses electric stick as a weapon which is used by some military forces. When she recalls, you can see her sending out the police infiltration drones. This patch is followed by the patch 4.15. This patch includes another 8-bit skin, this time it's Legendary Vigar. If I had to go through every single reference this skin has, I would be here for another half an hour. This skin has recorded more than 100 lines for different champion interactions, buying items, or just using different abilities. In fact, all of his quotes in-game are quotes from some other character from some other game. This patch also brought in the Project Yasuo and Headhunter Caitlyn. This skin is a very strong resemblance to Metal Gear series. His fighting pose, equipment and even running animation seems to be reference to Samuel. The first name for the skin was the Cyber Ops Yasuo, similar to the Arctic Ops, but later on it was renamed to Project Yasuo. Headhunter Caitlyn was a long-awaited skin. It is a reference to the Predator movies, same as all the other Headhunter skins. Moving on to the patch 4.16. This patch brought in another amazing champion from Design Point. Azir quickly became another very fun to play champion. Azir is the leader of Shurima. He believes that the way of life they live 
would benefit all the other cities around. He is one of the leaders that don't want to conquer the world, he just wants to spread the way of life. His dance is a reference to Michael Jackson's song Remember the Time. He was voiced by Travis Willingham, who also voiced Talon. And as we know, Talon has also Michael Jackson's dance. Together with other Shurima champions, Azir is the reference to the Egyptian god Ra, Nasus is Anubis, and Renekton is Sobek. Same as the other Shurima champions, Azir too has a galactic skin, but this one seems to be bound to the Egyptian gods of the Stargate series. This also seems to be referenced in the recall animation. I should also note that Azir himself is not an actual bird. The bird-like head is only just an armor of the ancients. He gained this armor after he was possessed by the ancient powers when he revived Sivir. And Sivir is actually the last in the bloodline of Azir. This is all explained in the Rise of the Ascended promotion. Kha'Zix also got Shurima-like skin. The Guardian of the Sand skin could be referencing Kefri, the Egyptian god of the Scarab, which he definitely looks like. This patch also brought in the Ascension game mode. This game mode allowed a single player to be the boss of the game for a limited time. This was all in the theme of Shurima. Moving on to the patch 4.17. This was another relatively small patch. We got the entire Fnatic crew. These skins were in development since the Season 2. These skins include Fnatic Gragas, Chaina, Corky, Jarvan and Kassas. There is also one bonus little skin, which is Order of the Lotus Karma. This skin was also suggested by fan. It is a reference to the Order of the Lotus from Avatar series. Other than that, this patch reworked Soraka and Victor. It made Soraka more complex and it made Victor less dependent on the upgrade he bought. This little patch was followed by a major patch, the patch 4.18. This patch actually brought in something that we've waited for more than two years. The Dunkmaster Darius. We've seen videos and hints two years before its release. This legendary skin has basketball references all around. More than 60% of all the quotes have the word Dunk in it. He also wears shoes named Noxus Air. This is a reference to the Nike Air shoes. All of the animations that were made for the skin are actual basketball moves. Other than this skin, we have Championship Shivana, another championship skin that was picked because of the popularity of the champion. And then we have Ravenborn LeBlanc and Underworld Wukong. Both of these are Halloween skins. The Raven illusions were inspired by Edgar Allan Poe and his poem The Raven. Wukong seems to be just randomly picked to fit the Underworld theme. This patch also opened the Hexakill, a mode played on Twisted 3 line with 6 players on each side. Coming up to November, this brings up the patch 4.19. We got two skins, which are Reaper Soraka and Victorious Morgana. Of course, Soraka is a reference to death, which is exactly what she's not supposed to do, and then you have another Victorious skin. Then we also have model and texture upgrade for Singed. But the reason this patch is so awesome, because finally we got brand new Summoner's Rift. I absolutely love how the visuals change depending where you are, but just listen to this. The soundtrack of the new Summoner's Rift is just so good. It fits incredibly well and the longer the game is, the more energetic it gets. You can say whatever you want, but the music is half of the atmosphere. Oh, and also, I totally forgot about the Victorious Ward. Moving on to one of the last patches of the year, the 4.20. This is a very large patch, so let's get on it. It starts with Kalisa, another well-designed champion. 
her name is most likely taken from Callisto, a nymph in Greek mythology that tricked Zeus and got turned into beast. The story says that Callisto punishes betrayal in Underworld. This was referenced few days before her release. Seven different champions got their description covered in Fog. These are Cassiopeia, Hecarim, Leblanc, Lysandra, Twisted Fate, Zerath and Zed. All of these have betrayed someone in their life. The skin Blood Moon Callista represents herself as she would be seen by others in Ionia. When Callista were still a human, she knew a person called the Ruined King. This person was the owner of the Blade of the Ruined King. Callista feels sorrow for graves being betrayed by Twisted Fate. But she doesn't have the same feeling for Sivir, as she was betrayed during robbery. Other than this awesome champion, we have two Battlecast skins at once. We have Battlecast Kogmo and Battlecast Skarner. Both of them were hinted since the very first Battlecast skins. But Skarner got to be named the Alpha, which means that he is the primal Battlecast. This probably means that he was the very first Battlecast ever created. This patch also got us the Cops and Robbers event. Evelyn and Twitch both being the robbers, and Trundle and Volibear being the cops. All of these skins are tied to the same robbery in Piltover. And as the preseason began, Maokai also got his texture upgrade. And this brings us to the final patch of the year 2014. The patch 4.21, in December the 10th, 2014. Major patch releasing Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is the very first Voidborn female in the game. She is also the very first champion to ever use Borrow in-game. Rek'Sai is totally different type of the other Void creatures. She is very primitive and bloodthirsty, that's why she doesn't talk. Together with Nar, they are the only two champions that don't speak known language. Unknown fact is that Rek'Sai is actually incredibly huge being. She was just scaled down to fit in-game, just like Cho'Gath or Malphite. Her Eternum skin is the same theme as Nocturne has, as both of them can jump around the map. Following the Blood Moon Kalista, Blood Moon Elise and Blood Moon Thresh were also released. Blood Moon Elise is a reference to Shinto Yorugumo, an ancient being that transforms into woman to seduce men before turning into giant spider. Blood Moon Thresh on the other side could be a reference to Shinigami, a spirit which politely invites people to their death. If you zoom in on the shield of Thresh, you can see the screaming souls. And because it's winter and it's the snowdown, we got three new skins. We got Snow Day Malzahar, Winter Wonder Oriana and Poro Rider Sejuani. All of these skins are bound to Poros. Malzahar has Poro pets, Oriana has Poro ball and Sejuani is riding a giant Poro. These skins came with the mode Legend of the Poro King, a very fluffy mode that we are all familiar with. Draw Poros in each other's faces just so you can summon a giant King Poro. All of these come with Poro wards and Poro icons. And that's how we end the year 2014. I hope you all enjoyed this video and feel absolutely free to tell me your most memorable moment of the year. So as always, thank you come again.